The only numbered region we had in Earth view has now rotated to the sun's backside, and all we've got left is a remnant coronal hole to keep us company. How will this affect you? Those stories are more in the news this week. Solar flux tanks this week as the only numbered region on the Earth-facing disk rotates to the sun's backside. You can see the glow from region 2712 right there as it disappears behind the sun's west limb. And all we're left with are these two regions here that are hardly bright enough to even be seen. They're in fact, they're not active enough to even have numbers. So we are back to a spotless sun. This means the solar flux is has gone all the way down back to poor propagation conditions. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're having a heck of a time this week. But luckily in about three or four days, a new region will be rotating into Earth view off the sun's east limb. And hopefully that will bump up the solar flux again for you and get that radio propagation back up. Meanwhile, we have a, a remnant coronal hole that is rotating across the sun's face right now. The eastern side of this hole is actually not closed up yet, so it actually will be sending us some fast wind for a short while, probably about mid next week. So we might be able to see some aurora at high latitudes. I'm not sure it's going to make it down to mid latitudes. It's probably not going to last long enough to bump us up to storm conditions, but we could easily see active conditions from this little coronal hole. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see over this past week, we've actually been doing pretty well when it comes to X-ray flux, which is a proxy for solar flux. We've been sitting around the B floor, which is pretty good for solar minimum conditions, even popping some B-class and C-class flares every now and again because of region 2712. But since this region is now rotating off of the sun's west limb, you can see it right there in the X-ray flux. Just watch it go, and it just tanks. And that's what we're dealing with now. We're now at a spotless sun. Radio propagation has also tanked because the solar flux tanks right along with the x-ray flux. We are now in poor radio propagation conditions and we will continue to be like that easily over the next few days. Switching to your solar storm conditions, even though we are approaching solar minimum, we are still getting some storm activity. In fact, on the 31st, we got hit by some fast wind from a coronal hole that we were expecting. Now, this coronal hole had given us some fast wind from the last time it came around, and it actually bumped us up to a moderate level storm. This time, we were expecting not to get hit quite so hard, and that's exactly what happened. But it was enough to still bump us up to storm conditions for a short while and give us some gorgeous aurora, especially Aurora Australis down south. After that, it became, lingered out of active conditions for a few days before things began to calm down. And then on the 6th, we got hit by a, cell, a stealthy solar storm that nobody saw. Now that didn't hit us all that hard. And then after that, it's kind of calmed back down again, and it will continue to calm down. We're at unsettled conditions right now, and that will probably go to normal conditions, even quiet conditions here over the next couple days before we have a chance to get hit by that fast wind from that little tiny coronal hole that'll happen about eh, midtime next week. And although many people were either clouded out or in the northern hemisphere they were blinded by the summer sun or they were mooned by the near full moon, we still had some beautiful aurora views all over the place, like this from space from the ISS. And in Canada, we saw it in Manitoba and in central Alberta and in British Columbia. It even dipped down to the United States for a very short while. We saw it in Maine and in North Dakota, just barely, and in Minnesota. And then down south, these were some of the most spectacular views. This is where the solar storm peaked. So they got gorgeous views in New Zealand. It was all over New Zealand. I had a hard time choosing which shots to show you. And also in Tasmania. And we had some gorgeous views even down in Antarctica. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see that single bright region on the backside of the sun. That's the region I'm talking about is going to rotate back into Earth view here in the next three to four days. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, if you can kind of just grit your teeth through this dry spell here over the next maybe week or so, then 
you'll be able to enjoy some boost in the solar flux and a boost in radio propagation and hopefully get you back into marginal propagation conditions. Meanwhile, that region, if we look at it, it also looks like it's popping off a few flares here and there. So we are also going to be watching it quite closely just in case it might fire off a solar storm. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with some disturbed solar wind from a remnant coronal hole that's kind of rotating across the sun's face right now, but it's not really giving us all that much, so overall conditions are reasonably quiet. That is until about mid next week when we actually will get some pockets of fast wind from a small part of that coronal hole that's actually better formed. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with about a 30 to 50 percent chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled normal to unsettled conditions with about a 40 percent chance of active conditions and only a small chance of a, of a minor storm. But this won't last all that long midweek, so we expect that you're going to catch aurora, but if you're going to catch it, it's not going to be for very long, maybe a day, maybe less. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green as you would expect for a near solar minimum sun. Region 2712 has rotated to the sun's backside, so the sun is now spotless again. And of course, as a consequence, the uh, solar flux has dropped. We are back into poor radio propagation conditions. The nice thing is that this shouldn't last too long as we have that new region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, probably around mid next week, and we'll start seeing that solar flux rise again, and hopefully it will bump us back into marginal radio propagation. So the space weather this week is really quieting down. Region 2712 has rotated off of the sun's west limb and the solar flux has tanked because of it. We're back to a spotless sun, which means you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're just gonna have to grin and bear it for a few days until a new region rotates back into Earth view from the sun's backside. Now you GPS operators, you're actually loving it. Your reception actually gets better when the solar flux is low. So enjoy the next couple days because you get a reprieve from any issues you might have, especially at low latitudes. And you, and you aurora photographers, well, I know pickings are getting kind of slim, but we do have a chance when this finger-like coronal hole rotates into the Earth's strike zone here about mid next week, you do have a chance for aurora. It may be slim, but there's something there. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.